Cyberpunk dystopia in space meets resource management as you try to keep your synthetic body alive against the wishes of a space station of other people. There's a lot of great writing packed into its simple interface, plenty of different paths and stories to explore, and it might be the first game of all time to create a dice-based system I actually like. The style of resource management is usually something that burns me out. It's either stressful or monotonous. So I was happy that while there is a bit of threat in making ends meet, it's mostly used to drive you into situations and stories organically. Drinking at a bar for energy somehow leads to biorobotic, semi-conscious mushrooms. Gathering medication puts you in contact with the underworld. It's short as well, which I find an underrated virtue. Build Your Own Puzzle meets City Builder. Dorf Romantic is about matching up tiles together in a way that looks good and might also get you points. The game's over when you run out of tiles. New tiles are given for perfect matches and completing little objectives like making huge connected forests. It's technically possible to keep it going forever, but I don't really see the point of that. Instead, it's the visuals, music and the satisfaction of clicking into something that fits just right make this almost worryingly relaxing. We become as Zen babies, happily pushing shapes into holes. Pixel art swamp cyberpunk misery in the American South. This is a classic adventure game with enough emotional complexity to sell what normally uh, I find a pretty boring genre. There's a compelling sickliness here, love dissolving in a soup of destruction and loss, a soundtrack that feels like it's blanketing you, the way colours and shapes blur into each other. In the end, I don't think the story quite sticks the landing, but like music, when someone really really means it, a bad ending doesn't really matter. One of a thousand recent clones of old school Final Fantasy, Tactics or No, and this might be the best. Uh, decent turn based combat, plenty of jobs to try out and match together, that's all well and good, but what makes the game worthwhile is how it goes beyond nostalgia. Open ended exploration, no campy storyline, tons of secrets. Weirdly, it's a JRPG that doesn't treat you like an idiot. It also makes you do a lot of jumping, which is kind of a platformer as well. Bullet hell is one word for it, cathartic is another. Dodge, weave and pick things up. But with lots to unlock and secrets to find, you somehow keep playing. Eventually it starts to get very messy as all the different incremental upgrades grow your character into an epilepsy inducing killing machine, but up until then it's the best flash game you ever played on miniclip. Marissa. Did we get it right? <laughs>